Welcome to Business Coaching Secrets with Carl Bryan. If you want to attract new high-end coaching clients, fill live events, and build a wildly profitable coaching practice where business owners pay, stay, and refer, you've come to the right place. In this podcast, Carl provides his keys to the kingdom for finding and signing high-paying clients and building the coaching business of your dreams. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, coaches around the world, welcome to another episode of Business Coaching Secrets with the man, the myth, the big man himself, Carl Bryan is in the house. I dropped the doctor for you this week, Shoots. I dropped the doctor. The well doctor done. is not in the house. It's just the the legend Good. himself, Carl Bryan, is in the house. There you go. Welcome, Shoots. Back. Road Dog. How are you, buddy? What's happening? Give us the good words. Living my best life, my friend. Living my best life. How were uh, how how was the past week for you? It's good, good, buddy. I actually, you know, so I'm filming. Actually, want to tell I, I have to film a video uh, for the company. You know, like a welcome video for you know all the new clients moving forward. And I'm kind of doing it. And I'm trying to do it with like a good backdrop and like. I burnt my face because <laughs> the sun is shining. <laughs> and then like a couple of times, like I nailed it and I'm not, you know, video. It's not like I'm uncomfortable, but I'm, you know, it's not like I'm the one take guy necessarily. And I'm trying to deliver a script that needs to make sense. It needs to coalesce, you know, like go from here to here to here. And I burnt my face and I'm like, oh my God. And then one of them, I nailed it and a dump truck goes racing by. Another one, Beautiful. my stupid calendar went off. <laughs> Uh, another way I got sweat pouring down my forehead and I'm wiping my forehead and I'm like, yeah, probably need to wipe that before I start. So anyway, so that's what I was doing. And, uh, so my face is pretty red at the moment, but anyway, well, you know, some might say you got a face made for radio, but the beauty <laughs> is I do. you could actually set up on your, uh, cause I know you're an iPhone kind of a guy they, they, they do have settings. Um, like a do not disturb type setting. Um, that'll that'll just stop all those calendars and beeps and whatever else is happening. Because I know you're a very popular man, and people uh, people want to speak with you all the time. I and it's it's interesting. If you're gonna send Carl a message, just make sure it's in a huge font. That's all I'm gonna say about that. <laughs> so there you go. Man, actually, right, she's my she's wife actually there. gonna tell you this one too. A good one. She's there and she's like watching, and she's like. She disappears. She comes back, and she comes back with makeup. And I'm like, "What are you doing?" She's like, "We have to." She goes, "She goes, we have to cover your nose." Oh. Like, what do you mean we got to cover my nose? And she didn't. So, you know, my nose has been broken a few times, and it's got some, got some scarring on it from having big mouth and small fists over my days. But anyway, so there you go, Road Dog. That's the that's. Big That's mouth and small fists. I love it. I'm surprised you didn't come out with the, the you know, the glasses with the nose and the mustache on it for you to wear. <laughs> I maybe. I, you know what? That might not be such a bad idea after you watch the video. Right? Let's find yeah. out what the feedback is. But anyway, that was you're, my. You're not going to lose the best part, and that's those uh, those chicklets of yours. So there you go. All okay. right, we'll dive into that another time of whether or not those are actually real or if those were a replacement from your big mouth and small fists. That's for another <laughs> episode. You see what I just did there, Carl? That's called a teaser. You see what I did nice. there? It's nice, right? Nice. All right, nice. speaking of teasers, speaking of secrets, um, we got a good question here. Uh, pretty pretty big. Uh, I'm not sure how – I'm curious, right? How like, it's. I, I always think when I read these questions, how is Carl going to handle this one because – it almost seems like somebody's looking for a shortcut or a hack. That's the way that I interpret this. Because the question is, is there a secret ingredient to business coaching success? So I'm just going to leave that one with you. What, what do you think of that? Uh, what am I going to say? You know what? The video that I just did, you know, one of the questions was, uh, are you, you know, so, the, you know, I uh, framed it and I had a few questions, you know, are you going to be successful? And the answer is that, you know, the ones that succeed, see it as like the ones that don't succeed, see it as like a 90 day experiment. You know, it's minute to minute, hour to hour, day to day, week to week, deciding if what we have works and if it's going to work for them. Right. And it's like, 
you got to go all in. You know, we're a decade into having this, you know, a decade and a half into this. It's it's undeniable that the system works. It's just a matter of if they're going to work the system, right? So I'm trying to make them feel comfortable that that shouldn't be the process. What you got to do is you got to go all in. This isn't an experiment. This is a career, right? You know, you're going to be remembered for what you refuse to give up on. Um, anyway, so sounds obvious, but frankly, it's 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 not. Um, you know, I had the uh, the benefit of knowing that what I was, um, you know, I was introduced to business coaching. I just it's what I wanted to do. You know, like I sold my interest to in my other business, and I just I went all in times a thousand. And I guess Road Dog is just psychology. It's it's the Rocky story. It's Nelson Mandela. It's Jackie Robinson and baseball. It's Oprah with the, the talk show. Um, it's Walmart. You ever read the book uh, Made in America? Fabulous, right? And it just overcame it. You know, he, he overcame it and built Walmart. But like all of those stories have got like this massive, um, you know, it's like this massive challenge that they overcame. In fact, I, I wrote an email ridiculously recently, um, may have been today, depending upon when you're listening to this, but is a, a story about Mel Fisher, right? Like it, it took him 17 years to find a hundred million dollar um, treasure. And it might've been, I, I read somewhere where it was much more than that. It was, it was an obscene amount of money. So let's just call it a hundred million dollars. And it's off the, the Florida Keys. But the thing is, it took him 17 years. Most people won't spend 17 minutes fighting for something, right? And, you know, business coaches, again, at 90 days. And then what they're doing is they're deciding, here's the worst bit, Road Dog. Like, they're deciding the whole way if they're going to keep going. And that's, it's, again, it's not an experiment, right? You got to go all in. This is a career. And and Mel Fisher, by the way, which is literally made into a movie. I don't I, I don't know the name of the movie, but you know he lost a son, he lost a daughter-in-law. Um, think he lost two wives, lost his fortune, lost more friends than he could count, family members. Like he lost everything, right? No doubt his sanity as well at different times. But you know, did he pack it in? Did he give up? Did Rocky pack it in? Did he give up? Uh, did Oprah pack it in? Did she give up? And the answer is no. And then why? And they had these three central beliefs. Um, and I believe that these three central, if you want to know, like, I don't know, secret, the secret ingredient, um, this is just kind of top of mind. Like you got to have, well, the central beliefs for Mel Fisher that I dropped in the email, the blog post is, is it there? Um, and then it's, uh, can I find it? And then most importantly, it is it worth it, right? The third one, is it worth it? That's the secret. That's the the ingredient. Like it's are you gonna like are you gonna stay up like, oh, I you know, you want to go to bed? Like, are you willing to stay up and not get enough sleep tonight in order to watch the videos to understand how you're gonna um, you know, deploy the lead generation, the conversion of the fulfillment for the clients. Like, are you, are you going to be willing to do that? Right. I remember when I used to get people into coaching, this is way back in 2005, I'd give them this report. It was about 40 pages. And I'd literally tell them this road dog. I was like, this is either going to put you to sleep or not allow you to sleep tonight. You know what I mean? It's either going to keep you awake or put you to sleep. And you're going to know if it put you to sleep, this is not right for you. But if you can't, you know, if you can't get the sleep after reading this because you're so fired up, so excited, all you can do is see the opportunities, then guess what? Welcome to your new career as a business coach. But that's going back a few years, but that's, that's what I used to say. But Road Dog, is it there? Can I find it? Is it going to be worth it? The third one is is the biggie, you know? So so that's what I'd say, Road Dog. I don't know, top of mind, I guess, but a secret ingredient, uh, go all in and it'll be worth it. So. That's okay, so follow up on that. So, like, how how can you bring those core beliefs back to a business coach? Oh, um, good idea. By the way, um, well, okay, is it okay? So, what what is it? You know, there, find it, worth it. Um, are the business owners out there? Right? Are you going to be able to find them? And are you going to be the one? Like, are are you going to work hard enough and build enough trust? And do what's required for them to whip out their credit cards, sign the paperwork, and effectively engage in a relationship with you for to be their coach, their consultant, their mentor. Like, as an example, um, would you be willing to coach somebody for free for the first, th you know, first month, and then close them in week five? Would you be willing to do that? Again, there's a lot of, um, you know, I don't know, training or methodology out there where you you never coach for free. And we say, you know, it's, 
guy named Tom Brady that threw a football for a while for free before he started getting paid. You know, Wayne Gretzky was shooting a hockey puck around for a long time before he started getting paid. Joe Montana was the same. Jerry Rice was the same. You know, like, you know, Oprah, you know, again, she paid the price for a, you know, for a long time, um, you know, in the journalism world, right, without getting paid either nothing or a very minimal amount before she cracked it. So, so I just say that, you know, it's, um, you know, can you find them and will you in, engage enough so that they'll, you know, basically write the the paperwork and, and then is it worth it? Is it going to be worth it? Is this a career that you want? Is this, you know, do you want to be semi-retired for the rest of your life would be a question I would put forth to somebody thinking about it. Well, become a successful business coach or consultant and you're, you can be semi-retired for the rest of your life, right? You take on five clients at $2,000 a month, that would be $10,000 for the rest of your life. You never have to worry about dipping, never have to worry about social security, never have to worry about dipping into retirement, never be worried about a 2008 happening when the value of your home came crashing down, right? So, so will it be worth it? So number three is the biggie. It's obvious, but it's the foundation of it all. And, uh, you know, you, you gotta be willing to fight again. Is it going to put you to sleep or is it going to keep you awake? Um, you know, so back to a business coach, like if you're sitting there wondering, like, why don't I get the clients? Why don't I get asked to speak at the big event? Or maybe it's at the, you know, the chamber event. Why don't I get the referrals? Um, you know, why does your phone ring and mine doesn't? Why is my phone not ringing? Why do I not get the emails? Why do I not get the inquiries? Why do I not have, you know, the joint venture partner, the accountant responding? And I would just say, you know, that it's, it's, are you rock solid in those three central beliefs? And if you are, those types of things over a period of time, again, you, you know, you, you can't water a plant 10 times a day and then have it, you know, magically grow. You got to do it, ten, you know, you got to do it every day, every day, every day. It's not a, it's an apple a day keeps the doctor away, not seven apples on Sunday, right? So, you know, Road Dog, there's a, what's that saying? If, if you didn't care who gets the credit, <laughs> you could accomplish anything. That's a famous quote. I don't even know who it might be Ronald Reagan or something along those lines. But, you know, if you didn't care who got the credit, you could accomplish anything. And truthfully, many people won't do it without the credit. And I think Tony Robbins would probably refer to that as people that are driven by significance. Right. And that's why they don't get and they won't enjoy the, the success. Right. So. So I suppose like back to the point you know, no real secret ingredient. Like Road Dog, what I would say is like somebody's a coach or a consultant looking for an, you know, the, the magic pill, the secret ingredient, whatever they call it, that little red arrow you are here is required, right? So questions I need to understand, like, are you a sales type? Okay, well, that's going to be a different, um, sub, that's going to be a different roadmap. Are you highly analytical in that A-type personality? Are you super organized? Are you really well-connected? Um, and really network over a period of time and have a lot of trust out there? Or are you the opposite, right? So, you know, have you done an internal SWOT analysis, I get, um, to work out where you're at, like SWOT strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and then threats. Um, and I could definitely tell you, Road Dog, as you say, like the magic will be in somebody's resourcefulness. You, you, you got to be careful not to limit your goals and thinking um, via like your current resources that you have access to, like think resources, that's money, that's experience, um, that's people, that's your network, that's your staff that you may or may not have, that's your time. You might have a full-time job. You might have a part-time job. You might have young kids at home, right? Your, they say your network, that's going to be really important, right? It's like, it's like placing a governor on yourself. When you look to what you've got, your ultimate resource is going to be your resourcefulness. So you get a, you got to plan your future and create goals with the mindset that you've absolutely got no limitations whatsoever. If you're dedicated and you want it badly enough, the resources are just going to show up. You know, highly, highly successful people are future orientated. I've often talked about, you know, the absolute importance of thinking, you know, a year, three years, five years, 10 years, 25 years in advance. Um, when, when people do that, you know, you, you create a big vision and then collect resources needed as you move along. Like think about the four and a half foot tall, 120, 120 pound, you know, Taiwanese guy or Filipino or something along that lines, but just somebody from, you know, from another country when they show up 
um, no ability to speak the language, don't even really understand, have different money, um, so they don't really understand, you know, nickels, quarters, and dimes and whatnot. They got no contacts, no resources whatsoever. They just got some hustle and exactly zero quit. Um, and quite frankly, they have the zero quit because they can't afford to have any. Um, you know, they don't have that option of falling back on mom and dad and, you know, savings or the, you know, their network or their community, whatever it might be, right? Um, well, the result for that individual who comes from Taiwan, comes from the Philippines, they build themselves a multi-million dollar business with dozens, dozens of effective staff and, and team members. You know, it happens all the time. You, I, I would dare say that you definitely know an example of this in your own world, right? So like, if I go through like past conversations where people told me that like they're not achieving success or what they set out to do for like a specific reason, the, the reasons that I would see would lack of money, lack of education. Um, I'm too young. I'm too old. Right. Um, I'm not a salesperson. I'm not convincing. I, I don't have the experience that you have or they have or road dog has. And then I go like no money equals more hungry. Right. You know, education would equal maybe your street smart too young. Well, you got a fresh perspective that the old guys don't have or too old. You've got wisdom. You've got experience. You're going to bring balance to the relationship. You're going to bring balance to them because you've been around the block. Um, not a salesperson, you know, well, you're going to be more value driven and you're going to be more prepared to be, you know, the tortoise as opposed to the hare. Um, and, and, frankly, which one wins the race, right? Um, you know, no experience. You're going to make things happen because you're a mover and a shaker, right? So, so you know, you got to go to what, you know, like whatever the, like, what is it? Your, your greatest strength is going to be derived from your greatest weakness, right? Like I spoke to a guy recently, dad's worth, you know, all kinds of money, hundreds of millions, very, you know, some, but the kind of person that you would have heard of and highly successful. And like, he blames his dad for his lack of success, right? Because his dad gave him everything. He therefore didn't have the hunger um, and he didn't have to generate, create the skill set, right? He didn't need to be creative in that area, right? The mind boggles when you, when you think about that. But again, your greatest strength is derived from your greatest weakness. You got to stop hiding behind that computer, staring at your phone and experiencing pain. Because again, you feel like you're too young, too old, not educated enough, don't have enough money, not, not, you know, experienced enough, or you're not the sales type, right? It's just, and, and by the way, look, your greatest, your greatest strength, what did I say? It, it's going to come from your greatest weakness, but here's something else. That's a little bit ironic. Your greatest weakness is often your greatest strength turned up too loud, right? Just think of the the loud, boisterous guy that you just love. He's the life of the party, but then it just goes a little bit too much, right? Um, you know, the world's a funny place that way. You know, it's uh, it's the big balancing act, I guess. And at the end of the day, it's a game. Just shouldn't take it too seriously. It's like Monopoly. At the end of the day, we're going to fold up the, you know, the the what do you call it, the the board. And, and go to bed. Um, so anyways, Road Dog, that's what I'd say. Um, I think that they've got to, you know, those three central beliefs, like, is it there? Are the business owners there? Can they find it? Will they hire them? Do they have the solution? Are they willing to guide, support, and direct business owners towards success? And don't expect it to come easily. You know, often one thing with coaching and consulting is it's harder than you anticipate, but it brings me to number three. And that's, Will it be worth it? And the answer is absolutely um, it's worth it. But, and you, you just talk to a, again, a coach that's, you know, doing six figures, multiple six figures and, you know, living that lifestyle, you know, on an island or in the city of their choice or able to, you know, travel and work from the beach, that sort of thing. I mean, it's amazing. You're, you're, you're semi-retired for the rest of your life as a successful coach consultant. It's unreal. So anyways, road dog, that's what I would say. I'd say they, to bring it back to coaching, they get a drill in on those, those three central beliefs, but for themselves. So what do you think? I think that's pretty, uh, pretty cool, man. The, the, your greatest weakness is your, what was it? Your greatest strength turned up too loud. Too loud. That's, that's kind of, kind of in a way that's, that's messing with my mind a little <laughs> yeah. bit here right now. It is. Not even right. lie about that. I'm glad you picked that up because I agree. That's you, you, and again, that yeah, that's the kind of thing you take it to a business owner. They'll they'll find that right. Like they're 
you know, they're, yeah, that's, they're super good salesperson. Well, they end up, you know, building this company and having all these sales. But unfortunately, what happens on the back end of sales? Things need to be followed through on. So you're closing deals, making things happen, signing deals that are way bigger than you thought you would. But now the fulfillment side, the other end, it ends up getting into a little bit of, you know, reputation um, issues, right? So anyways, lots of different examples there. But I, I Road Dog, uh, I agree that's a home run. And well, I just the, the the thing that I almost sort of get out of that is like you know it, it, take the permission to just be curious, right? It's like, well, I, I I'm not good in this. Well, you know what you are good at is your sense of curiosity to want to learn more. So and that's only going to make you great. So dive into it, right? Like as a business coach, I think one of the best things that we could ever have is our sense of curiosity to want to learn more and hone in on certain topics. I've been watching you do this for years now. Like you'll. You'll go down a certain path for a certain amount of time and you commit all in on it, right? Like you, when you went into the accounting thing, it's like you, you, like you, you got obsessed with it. Um, because, but but I, not, not obsessed in like a yeah, lunatic weird, kind yeah. of a way. Like, you know, here, that's anyways, that's a whole other <laughs> rabbit hole. But from a, a curiosity standpoint, right? It's like, huh, how can I solve this and how can I make it easier understood? And, how could somebody in, as you know, my existing clients apply this anyways, but that all said and pushing all that aside for one big moment here. Actually, Road Dog, can I just jump one, in? I just want to make sure yeah. that everybody's getting that. Like, okay, you mentioned, okay, the coach who a really good coach tends to be curious, interested, but you, could you see how that curiosity, could that become a little bit of paralysis analysis where you're constantly in learning, 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 learning mode, and then you never take the next step to the application, right? Where again, your greatest, you know, the strength was that you're super curious and you want to learn all the time, but then it literally stops you from taking the foot, put it in front of one another and, and making the call, sending the email, getting the client and making the career elevate. Right? Right. Yeah, and I I would say this then out of out of that, and actually that ties in really even much better than what I was gonna say. But <laughs> from the the biggest curiosity that I think actually goes quite unfulfilled by a lot of people, and this is one of the coaching questions I've been asked from multiple coaches. What do you want? And I just think that you'd have to no doubt you'd agree a key ingredient it would be to get clear on what they want. Yeah. Um, extreme clarity on what you want to accomplish is, you know, really defined. It's like if you have a problem, if you clearly define the problem, the answer almost pops out, right? Like, so, you know, to increase probability of achieving goals, get clear, get specific, right? That could fall straight out of any textbook. Um, you know, maybe ask this question, you know, what do you want to achieve at the expense of all other options available to you, right? There's power. What do you want to achieve at the expense of all other options available to you, right? Come up with some questions that'll help you and your coaching clients get to the right answer for you, or in the case of your client and the right answer for them. Like the question is where the, the you know, the, the magic is in the question, right? You ask the right question and you will get there. You know, if I won $10 million in a lottery, how would it change my life? You know, if I was going to die in 12 months, what would I be doing day to day? Might be a little bit morbid, but you get the idea, right? Um, what do I enjoy doing the most? Like, is that too lame? You know, what, what am I really good at? I asked my daughter literally this morning, I asked her this, I said, baby, what is it that you're totally passionate about? And she's eight years old, right? So she didn't, I had to clearly define it much better than that. But, you know, basically I asked her what she was super passionate about. And then I also asked her, what are you really good at? You know, and I believe that if those two things intersect, you've got yourself away. You know, like if I'm, if I'm wild about cars and I'm a mechanic uh, and I was a business coach and I went to, you know, businesses and the automotive niche. And think of all the different automotive niches that could be there. I'd be playing with, you know, folks that, you know, really, and I enjoy their company. They enjoy my company. I talk their language. We're doing all the same stuff. Like that would, you'd probably be a really, really successful coach in those niches. And there's, when you really look, 
you'll see that there's all kinds of different niches within, you know, in automotive. And that doesn't mean the car deal necessarily just mean the car dealership. There's so much more there, right? You know, like who do I currently spend time with? Who do you spend the most time with? Right? Who do you like spending time with? Right? Like that might tell you something, you know. Um, who in your life pushes me to think bigger? That's why Road Dog and I love to get together for a beer. You know, like we're sitting there across a the table, toes to toes, belly to belly, having a beer. You know, we're not talking about, you know what I mean? Like, and and sometimes we do talk about just menial nothing burgers, right? But we, you know, as a general rule, we're talking about you know, we're, we're, we're helping one another think at a higher level for sure. Right. Um, what's a dream accomplishment, um, that you've been afraid to try. So if you were to ask that, what, that I've been afraid to try, what, what would you, how would you answer that? What are your, you know, what are your three primary financial goals? You know, what are your three primary career goals? What are your three primary health goals? Maybe. Right. Um, you know, what are, what are your three biggest worries? You know, what keeps you awake at night? Um, here's one, like, what would you like them to say at your funeral? That, you know, again, like, come on. So ask these questions. And then I think what it's going to do is it's going to help you clearly define what it is that you want, you know, by answering the questions. Do you think your goals are going to become clear? And, and the answer is absolutely. But here, here's the problem. Don't just expect to ask those questions. This isn't a 10-minute exercise, right? I always talk about time to think. You got to go into a room, close the door, pen and paper, and just start writing, right? And don't stop. Don't get up and go for a bathroom break. Don't sit there and garble water. Um, you know, like, like take the bath. It's not to say you pee your pants, right? But you do it beforehand, get prepared. Like this is a serious, you know, take that seriously, right? Like clearly defining what it is that you want. Cause it, it probably not going to just jump out at you, you know, and the more clarity you get and more clarity your coaching clients get, um, you know, around the goals, the easier it's going to become for them to move forward, for you to move forward. And ultimately for you to accomplish that, you know, that, monster goal, right? Like that actually we talked on the pre-show. Somebody said, you know, it's like an elephant, you know, it's one bite at a time, right? A goal, just one step at a time. Just take one small step towards success. If you want to start walking, you want to start jogging, you want to start running, just put your shoes on and walk around the block as opposed to, you know, try and pretend like you're going to go do a five, 10 mile jaunt. Um, Again, that single step, you know, in Amazon.com, like this was an idea in Jeff Bezos's head. You know, how many great ideas have you had? And then all of a sudden you saw it three, you know, a year, three, five, 10 years later went, oh my gosh, I had that idea. You know, um, you know, Apple uh, and the home computer was kind of like a figment of Steve Jobs' imagination. You know, like when he saw it taking shape, I mean, he just couldn't stop. He became you, know, you talk about obsessed road dog, right? Like he was just like with Steve Jobs all in on the home computer, the understatement on steroids, right? And like, what are you all in on? You know, and go all in. And the most important is can't be all in on you. Can't be all in on you and your bank account. It can't be all in on, you know what I mean? Like, this isn't about you. It's always about them. You always do more for others than you will for yourself, right? Example I love it's six o'clock in the morning and you got to wake up. The kids need to be to gymnastics or parkour or hockey or baseball or football or whatever it is you need to take a cricket, whatever you need to take them to gymnastics. You are up, right? You're showered, shaved in the car, ready to rock and roll. And the kids are there with five minutes when it's your turn to get up, go for the jog, you know, read the book, do the program, what have you, what do you do? You roll over and hit the snooze button right? You make it about them, make it about the separations, make it about the divorces, make it about the kids and those families that get affected entrepreneurial families. Um, you know, do it about the business, you know, the, the business is closing down unnecessarily with some small little tweaks that they could be helped and not only helped, but they could have this wildly profitable business. And the gap is you showing up, you know, got to make it about them, you know, because again, things like Apple, Google was a university project took me five years to get my wife pregnant. You know, sometimes things take some time and some effort, um, you know, but just take your first step, but towards like, don't just take your first step. I want you to take your first small steps towards your greatness. 
I don't know. How, it, does that sound a little bit, you know, grandiose? But it it shouldn't because literally what? And by the way, what is greatness to you? Greatness to you? Greatness to me? Greatness to Road Dog? Completely different things. Like what is your greatness? And if you're like, well, I don't even know those questions. You got to ask those questions, and then that's going to help you, right? Like that. That's going to help you really clearly define it. And Road Dog, your question, like. Yes, the the clear the more clearly you can define it and the more you can decide like what do I want, the further you're gonna get all day long, twice on Sunday. So, you know, and then and then so like greatness. Think my I don't know, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, you know, certainly Wayne Gretzky in my little world. Um, you know, like in that that's who I looked up to when I was young. I say that like when Michael Jordan walked on a basketball court, right? Watch a video of him back in the day. He walked on it like he bloody owned the thing, right? Well, you walk into your life, into your office, into their boardroom, into the chamber event, into your event, um, into the yacht club for the, you know, whatever it is, the golf course to meet the business owners. Walk in there like you own the thing, you know, walk towards, um, you know, walk towards like you own that again. I'm thinking like Tony Robbins. What are the, what does he get you to do on day one? And he gets you to walk on fire, but you train for like a solid three hours before he takes you out there to walk on it. And what he's trying to do is just, you know, it's, it's mental toughness. It's, you know, don't think just do like, just, you know, you got to own the fact that you're going to walk across these coals long before. If you did it in a timid way, if you did it as an experiment, um, you'd burn the crap out of your feet, right? They'd have to, you'd, you'd be on fire. They'd have to get the hose out on you. Um, so, you know, kind of, I don't know, right, Road Dog, like take your first small step towards your greatness. But again, you'd have to define what greatness is to you and it's going to be unique to you. Um, and again, elephant, one bite at a time. Own it. Can, I, can I add to that, Carl? I, I, I yeah, think it's interesting. The, the, the first step, and you might feel maybe also look dumb doing it but you might feel this because when you mentioned tony robbins i remember the last business mastery event i went to i texted you and i'm like oh yeah, man I mean, yeah i don't even like why 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 this jumping up and down and you just replied back you fire back right away like just jump up and down and start dancing because you know by tomorrow you're going to be doing it anyways nice. and it was just so, like yep yep so true. But the, the thing that, that strikes me and what you're saying here, it kind of twofold because I kind of think it's different in terms of the individual versus the business side. So yeah. I, I'm, maybe yeah. you can help me decipher that a bit because I don't – like Zuckerberg is an example, right? He didn't start yeah. Facebook with meta and um, all of this AI and what – like he never started it. Like I sometimes think people – get into setting a target that is so huge, so overwhelming that they don't even know where to start rather yeah. than trying to become the master at solving one problem. Yeah. Would you agree with that? A hundred percent. Yes. By look, setting something, look, okay, well, road dog, it comes with the process that we've defined recently and a few times, but 25, 10, five, three, one year, and then quarterly goals, and then monthly goals, and then weekly goals up until your first month. Um, you know what I mean? And then the question is, do they all coalesce? Like, what is that big, big picture, right? So like, um, you know, uh, it was Microsoft wanted to have a, a home, a, a computer on every desk in every home, right? Like massive, massive goal at that, and that, at that time, you know, the computer was the size of a, you know, an entire boardroom, right? It was totally unrealistic, but that was their goal and they felt like they could get there. <clears throat> so I, I agree with you though. If you've got that massive goal, you're going to have to take it and break it down into bite sized small, realistic chunks because, you know, progress equals happiness. And like, if you don't make any progress, you're not going to feel any happiness, right? Like you're not going to, you're not going to feel like you're, you're getting anywhere. And you know, what do I, um, at the end the closer you are to the finish line, the faster you go, right? Yeah, Think about that. that. So you, yeah, so you you've gotta be careful to, to make this goal way too big. Bring you never it, get close. Bringing your numbers down. down, right? Don't, don't shoot for 100, shoot for 10. Shoot for shoot for one to start. This is it, but then keep readjusting, readjusting, readjusting and pushing. But again, think weekly, think monthly, think quarterly, think one year, three year, five year, 10 year, 
and then 25 years. So I think that that's where the, so that's, you know, yeah, that's, that's where I think the solution lies right there. And they all have to coalesce and every day, and you can, you can change. Like think of, you got a plane and you're going from Los Angeles to New York. You got to be dogmatic with the destination. That's non-negotiable. You got to get to New York. That's where the meeting is. You're going. But whilst in the plane, um, there might be a detour. There might be some turbulence. You might have to go up. You might have to go down. You might have to do a, you know, a detour. <laughs> I don't know why you do a detour in there, but you know what I mean, right? Like you got to adjust. You got to fly around the storm. But at the end of the day, though, you're going to New York. That's it. That's the 25 year plan, right? So you want to be dogmatic with that. That being said, if the weather is that bad and you got to land somewhere else and redefine your your destination once you've got more data, um, you know, and you've you've got further along in your journey, that that can be fine. But don't do it freely. You know, be very careful because those are the people with shiny light syndrome and they end up multiple streams of income and owning three companies and wondering why they're not getting anywhere. Um, yada, yada, yada. You don't, you don't want to be that guy. Goes into crypto, goes into real estate, goes into business coaching. And then next week they're, they're you know, internet marketing affiliate guru. So, yeah. Uh, what you do you say, think? Would you think, think Carl, it's fair, fair to say that even sometimes – that 20, let's say 20, 25 year, whatever it is, like, you know, for you, it's what, what's like, whatever the big one is, right? Yeah. But you don't even clearly know what that looks like yet, but, but that's okay because you know what the next thing looks like. And yes. it would almost be a joke because for, for myself, a person of faith, it's like, if I, if I try to pretend like I know what God's plan for my life is, like, that's kind of cute, right? Like, that's adorable because he's just sitting there laughing, going, you have no <laughs> idea what I've got in store for you. But you know yeah. what I mean, right? It's sort of like that whole thing of like, this is the end target that I want to achieve. The general idea of it, how how specifically I get there, and what exactly yeah. it'll look like. You, because odds are good, it's going to be probably ten times, a hundred times bigger than you actually think. And oh, and and you'd never get started, right? So yeah, so exactly. that's a really good point, Road Dog. Like you don't really that twenty five year plan. I mean, it's got to be semi abstract. Yeah, it'd be better if it was super, super defined. Look, that would be great, but I, I just don't. You know, certainly mine is not um, a, a computer on you know in every you know on you know in every a computer on every desk in every home. Look, they had no idea what is the computer going to look like, how big, how small. Was it going to be a laptop? Was it going to be a desktop? Was it going to be bigger than that? Was it going to look like a TV? They had no idea, but they just knew that that was the plan. Um, I was going to. Um, what was I going to say? Anyway, so that, yeah, that, you know, being comfortable with that. Oh, I was going to define like North Star. Again, we've talked about that a lot. So part of it, again, on a personal, well, it's personal and business, but like having a North Star will also help. Okay. So as an example, Gary Vaynerchuk, his North Star was, does it get me attention? Right. So if it got him eyeballs and let's say that you had a room of 25 people and then I had a room of 10,000 people, does it get me attention? Which room is he going to? We know, mm -hmm. right? It's more, more. I and he he defined attention as eyeballs, by the way, right? So, um, Zuckerberg, it was. Does it help us grow? He's come away from that, but does it help us grow? So, for a business coach, you know, like the attention, the Gary Vaynerchuk, like, does it get me in front of a business owner? As an example, that could be really tight, real simple north star for you, assuming that you're not already hugely established, right? You're trying to make it all work. Look. The Chamber of Commerce has got 30 people, right? Does it get me in front of business owners? You tell me if you should be there, right? And then B and I, they got 30 people. Should you go? And the answer becomes yes. And then, by the way, I would tightly, as you had some success, I would tighten that up and say, does it get me in front of a business owner that could afford $24,000 a year coaching, which is two grand a month? So now you've taken... You know what I mean? You've taken your North Star and then you've adjusted a little bit and adjusted as you got, and then you might become the $50,000 client. Does it get me in front of a prospective $50,000 um, business owner? And then, by the way, one of the best ways to get in front of a $50,000 business owner is to have network effects working in your favor, right? How does that relevant to what I just said? If there's a room of 100 people and they might not be the best audience, but you could safely assume that there's a few people in there that have real businesses and that would part with $50,000 for coaching. 
Well, the network effect is that by having a bigger audience, the one person in the audience will give you a higher level of credibility, a higher level of preeminence. There's going to be that network effect where there's a better chance of them signing on with your higher end coaching. I defined this um, in the last in a in a podcast recently where when you do group coaching, one of the X factors of it is that it brings up this like the supply and the the demand, not the supply, but the demand of your one to one coaching higher. So you're can you're gonna get it quicker, you can get it easier, and you can get it at a higher level as a result of your group coaching. So that's part of the magic that I don't think coaches see with group coaching is the network effect. Yeah, you want to have more people, less time. You know, there's that time for money quagmire that group coaching will solve, but also solves is the fact that you want to have people reaching out, buying your high-end coaching and doing it without batting an eyelid. By doing that group coaching, you can make that happen at a higher level for sure. So so the network effect is again having the the group, you know, in Hollywood when when you walk through a um, when you walk through a room with Tom Cruise and you're an actor, the value of your acting just went up big time, like big big time. Um, so there you go, Road Dog. Anyways, I hope that that helps. But that 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 um, that North Star, they might want to be thinking about creating the North Star, but then also factory in a little bit of network effect. Where does it does it make me more attractive? Does it make um, yeah? Does it make me more attractive? There you go. But it's so, so by me being the co-host, I'm not sure if it makes me more attractive standing. Well, it does definitely make me more attractive standing next to you. That's a fact. <laughs> definitely, like, that is a fact. Also, makes me look like a giant. But you know, that would be not you are a giant. You are a giant, buddy. This is it, right? Like this is me. Just like, hey, man, I co-host a show with Dr. Carl Bryant. Like this is a big deal. <laughs> not Listen, at all. Not a doctor. <laughs> That's going to be one of your famous quotes. But you know what? Whoever's, you know, there's some people that, uh, you know, they do the quotes and I've seen it. And the people tag you, they do a quote and it says Carl Bryan. That I'm going to put, I'm going to create that meme. Not a doctor. <laughs> Carl Bryan. All no, right. So to close us out, what's one thing from today's episode that somebody could take and implement into their bit? Because we got a bunch here, I think. But if you had to choose just one, what would you pick? Just one. I'd. I think the obvious just, is it worth it? You know, that you want to be successful in coaching. You want your clients to be successful with their businesses. You know, you just have to have that central belief that there's going to be a price. It's going to be, you know, possibly a greater one than you plan. And it's going to take more time than you plan. You got to go, you know, and what did uh, Mel Fisher? It's um, today. I think it's today's the day today. If you look it up, you'll see it. And again, it's a movie. But today's the day. Today's the day. Today's the day. Today's the day. Whoa. Seven. Like, what would you say if he was your husband, right? He was your partner. He was a friend of yours. And he's like, today's the day. Today's the day. Today in 17 years. I'd be like, man, I don't know if today's ever going to be the day, right? Like, you lost your marbles, man. And, and he literally, again, he, you know, son, his daughter in law. A um, couple of wives, I believe, lost his fortune. You know, it was a, it was a tough, uh, tough deal. And 17 years later, he got it. And the good news is that as a business coach, you don't need to wait 17 years. But importantly, Road Dog, a lot of people won't spend 17 minutes. And this is where don't come at coaching as an experiment. You got to go all in. It's a career, not an experiment. Um, and it will be worth it. If, if you're right, if you're you're doing it and it, you know, you'll know you know, in your soul, it, it's got, it's got to be one of those things that's in your soul. Like it's, it's, if it's in you, it's in you. And if it's not, it's not, um, I can tell you that. Um, and if it's in you, you got to go all in and it'll be worth it. So that's all I got shoots. That's all we got. But well, it's, it's, I think we should talk about this a little bit on the next uh, episode because we, you, you were saying, I think you're being very generous by the way, a 90 day experiment. I don't even think the average yeah. person's coming in with 90. I, I think if you said 30, I think that would be kind of more accurate. Sadly, You're being I'd agree. I know. I'd look, Road Dog, you'd be right. And it's just, it's like, this, like uh, you're, it's not going to work. This is going to have a poor ending, you know, and you're going to end up doing something different, you know? I had the yeah. conversation with the guy just like when I say recently, like this morning, um, a couple hours ago. And he was just, it was like, 
he just talking about this and that. I don't want to go into it too much, but he just, it was just like, you know, the guy. And again, he's he, like, you, you would have heard of him, I would imagine, right? And he's just shiny light syndrome on steroids. And it's just one thing to another thing, although he's doing some things incredibly well and got himself a decent profile. But again, it's also multiple companies, multiple streams of income, multiple this, multiple that. And I'm like, if you just went all in on that one, um, I think you'd be significantly more successful. So anyways, I, what am I trying to say? Just somebody who, you know, don't, look, Road Dog, we in the pre-show, actually not the pre-show, but you and I chatting earlier, it's like, you think that all these companies, you know, I think it was GE you were talking about, right? Like, I think they have it all worked out. They they don't have it all worked out. A buddy of mine is the president of a, about a $500 million company, hundreds of millions. And he says, like, just they to think we have it all worked out and it's all seamless to set and the other would be categorically incorrect, you know? So yeah. Anyway, so some, some heavyweights that you follow, they don't have it worked out. You don't have it worked out. I don't have it worked out. I don't think road dog has it worked out and that is okay. So yeah, that's what I yeah. got to say. I'm, yeah. It, but again, that, that, that's a whole other conversation we could get into as well. Maybe next time, just maybe make a note of this of, do you have an initial contract length of 90 days even? Cause I see it in marketing where people come up and be like, look, I got to make this work in 30 days. And it's like, if your runway is 30 days to make it work, you're not even committed to it. So I'm not even going to waste my time with it, but um, that's going to be a much deeper conversation and we're already over time. So on that note, Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Business Coaching Secrets with the main man, Dr. Carl Bryan, the king himself. And if you're not on the inside and getting access, getting access to the pre-show or Carl's daily health advice and tips, um, or primarily just business coaching tips, not a doctor, um, go to focus.com. This is getting off the rails quickly. If you enjoy the podcast, please share with a fellow coach or someone that you think might make a great coach. Or some, you know, some in the sales world, Tony Robbins fans, people like that. And of course, as always, if you enjoyed the episode, please do us a favor and rate it as we know that all the streaming services give a huge amount of weight towards that. And that is it for another week. We will see you in the next episode. And remember, folks, progress equals happiness. Take care, everybody. Carl Bryan built Profit Acceleration Software 2.0 to train business coaches how to find any small business owner more than $100,000 in 45 minutes without them spending an extra dollar on marketing or advertising. This becomes a business coach's superpower. So as a business coach, you'll never again have to worry about working with business owners that can't afford your high-end coaching fees. Check us out at Focused.com.